and if it's black lead, forget about it. Um, and so some of that, ha you know, there, uh, you know, there, I have lots of theories, but I'd actually rather hear from you. Okay, so the last couple of questions. One is, um, there's been a lot of, you know, there's the D5 initiative, and there's different regional initiatives around diversity. And is is uh, does the energy within philanthropy, however you characterize it, um, around diversity, does it point towards a structural racism and structural inclusion analysis, or does it change the focus away from equity and inclusion to diversity? Like, what's the relationship? Um, you know, and I, I don't want to pretend that I have any, I'm not in a lot of these, I'm aware of them, I'm not in them, so I don't want to really speak to them directly. I mean, I obviously think a lot of really important people, smart people are, are driving this in part because obviously one, one part of this equation is if the black folk in white institutions that push for more attention to, to the structural issues for black communities. So I do think that matters. I mean, I do worry. I do worry that it becomes a discussion of we'll, we will have done our jobs if we diversify our staffs. Because you can have a diverse staff, and we all have seen these institutions, and none of the money's flowing in the way it should. So diversity is not enough. I would say, you know, if true diversity means agency, right, means that the institutions are being responsive to the agency of people who have some sense of what's happening, in communities and have some accountability, even if it's a, even if it's a psychological accountability, mm -hmm. to what we're doing in black community and how we're doing it. So um, I don't think diversity is enough. Um, I think diversity can be done in a way that promotes structural change. I think it can be done in a way that doesn't. I, I, and I'll give, an, I'll, I'll give a personal example here um, from the Open Society Institute. When I joined, there were only a couple of us on staff who were black, just a small handful. Um, the foundation said, we're doing tons of stuff on race. Um, and the reason they said that is because the impact, the communities that were to be impacted by their funding, it's a lot of service delivery funding, a lot of criminal justice work, uh, uh, getting immigrants, uh, remember this was, in, this, I was there at the time of amnesty, so uh, getting Latino communities um, into you know, programs would help them get citizenship through amnesty, some of the prisoner reentry strategies. So the beneficiaries were largely people of color. And I said, well, that's not doing right. Great. I said, that's great. That's great. That has not, you don't have a strategy, you don't have an analysis. Who are you funding? You know, are you actually building up institutional leadership capacity in these communities? Because my point was, it hadn't occurred to them. So to have, and it wasn't just me, it's Erwin Ebrecht, it's Jocelyn Sargent, who you all may know, we're still in philanthropy. Uh, it was a critical mass of us driving this conversation. And by the way, with white allies, with white allies as well, who were saying, oh yeah, yeah, that's totally true. <laughs> um, driving a conversation internally, uh, if we didn't have a leadership that was willing to allow us to have that strategy conversation within the larger institution, it wouldn't have mattered that we were saying. It wouldn't have mattered that we were even there. And even with some supportive leadership, it took a, some of the stuff, I was gone, I left, and didn't come to fruition until five years after I left. You know, so the trajectory took a really long time in a foundation that was willing to talk about it. You know, that was willing to talk about it. Um, so I say that because I think it's not enough. They could have, it, with a different leadership, we could have all been the same people in that institution mm -hmm. trying to drive the same discussion with a totally different impact. So I think the question is, are we really willing to look, as an institution, not us in this room, as institutions, are we really willing to look at how opportunity is driven and how it impacts across race? Which can include white people, white people and race. Mm -hmm. um, but so that we are truly being inclusive and actually shifting the structures we need to shift, so. Okay, and I think the last question is, is kind of hard for me to uh, formulate, but I think it has to do with, you know, these, these Within these structures, it's all of you know, it's individuals within communities who are impacted. And are there ways through education, through different strategies around wealth building that go beyond home ownership to include owning stock, to include a mindset of business development perhaps, 
sort of like, how do you, what's the place of the individual and behavioral change and education and, and those kinds of strategies within this structural analysis you know, that's that a, focuses on yeah, policy? Uh, excellent question. Really, really, really good question. Um, you know, one of the things about structure is that we don't see it. It's influencing our lives and our decisions every day. But, not, but mostly we're not thinking, oh, the fact that I'm choosing where I live based on schools, though, that's structure. We're not thinking, right? We're not thinking about that at a conscious level. Um, it's, structure is also influencing our personal choices and behavior. So when we start to think about you know, what individuals do and what they choose, we forget that the structures are influencing those choices. So even individual choice, I mean, while you know, we all have the, the ability, obviously, to make different choices, sure, but the structures will influence that. So just like I told you, those black kids that my friend did the study on for her PhD dissertation, the struct, they were right about the structure. They were much more likely to get a job as a bus driver than they were to get a job in the long run. They were not wrong. So how were their choices being driven about what path they were going to put themselves on, right? They were choosing, they were aspiring to be bus drivers. Um, if you look at, you know, there's a lot of this great research, uh, um, I'm blanking on the guy's name, who looked at kids, particularly in Chicago, who were opting to be in drug gangs. And they honestly thought their wages would be higher. It turned out not to be true, which was that they would make more money flipping burgers at McDonald's. Well, by the way, you're, it's easier to get a job in the drug gang than at McDonald's. You actually have waiting lists. And you have actually 200 applicants for one burger flipper job. So number one, those jobs aren't easy to get because of the structure of the economy. But secondly, then, it's driving decisions. It does not seem so irrational or like a bad judgment to sell drugs. So I'm not saying it's a good choice. It's obviously a bad choice. But if we don't pay attention to the way structures drive individual choices, we will never change those choices. You can preach at people all you want, but if the kid is seeing the bus driver, the kid's going to aspire to the bus driver. If the kid is seeing the drug deal in the corner and knowing it's a flipping burgers at McDonald's is not even a viable option, even if they think they might want that job. So, you know, there's all kinds of, and think about smoking. I love this. I'm a con to talk more about this and more knowledge than I could. But, you know, one of the ways in which we got people to shift their attitudes about smoking and to become intolerant of it, kids less likely to pick up a cigarette in the first place, but we restricted where you could smoke. We changed the structure in order to influence the attitudes and behavior. And every social psychologist that I've read says if you want to change behavior, you, if you want to change attitudes, you have to change behavior which means you have to restrict bad behavior, uh, structurally though, right? This isn't an individual. So, you know, we, it's really, really important to think about how structure is going to create choices. So, thank you, Maya, please join me. Thank you.